Now listen, if you were here, well, I know some of you were, some of you were not. If you were here early this morning, um, I was talking about some changes that have been taking place in my life recently. And one of those, and I, I've, believe me, all these years I have been constantly asking the Father, how far do I go with this? Because I, I'm, I have a, I'm naturally given toward discipline, toward a military mindset, right? Uh, I was raised in a police officer's home. I understand authority. I understood authority. I saw it. Uh, I, I get it. it. It's a natural fit for me. It's so easy. That's why I, it would have been really easy. And for many years, I was a very good Pharisee, right? Very legalistic. Uh, you, you know, you make a mistake, doom, you're, that's it. History gone, right? Uh, and then God, by his grace, mercy, and some sense of humor, uh, decided to put uh, my daughter-in-law in our family. And through her, she, God started working a whole lot of grace in my life. And, I, and, and, you know, I don't even know how all that worked. It just did, right? And because of that, uh, over the years, and it, believe me, it took years, okay, uh, that God began to soften me. And I really started loving people. And because when I started, I didn't love people. When I started, I hated the devil. I didn't really love people, but I hated the devil. Why? Because he stole my daughter. And so I went after power. And to be honest with you, it took me a lot longer to find it than it should have. Because nowadays, we can take somebody and walk them into power in 10 minutes. And they'll see God work through their life. And it took me years because of all the stupid stuff that I had been taught that I had to get out of my life. And so all, it took all that time to get those sacred cows and get that stuff out of there. And it took a long time. And then God started softening me. And when he started softening me, during all that time, I was still, I still liked the, uh, you know, the militancy. I'm, we're still very aggressive against the enemy and against his works. Extreme aggressiveness there. I don't believe we go overboard with it there. But I will tell you, I'm constantly asking him, as far as the militant structure, as far as the, uh, how we were doing things, I was constantly asking him, how far do I go? And, and honestly, in many of these areas, I believe at the time for my personal development, it was necessary. <clears throat> Whenever it went past that and a lot of that we kept using, it has been, uh, how can I say, harmful in many ways. And so we've, I'm constantly analyzing how much, how far do I go with that? And I've reassessed a whole lot of it. And, and to be honest with you now, I, in my own life, I'm still disciplined. But the difference is, I'm not going to enforce that discipline on you. I will preach the standard of the gospel to you, but I'm not going to enforce a standard on you because that's called legalism, right? Now, I will present the gospel, and, but I'm not even going to try to judge whether you're living up to the standard that I preach, right? That is between you and God. I'm not your Holy Spirit, and I refuse to walk in that role. Amen? I refuse to. Now, I will walk with you. I will help and do whatever I can to do but at the same time listen I've got three children three grown children all married uh, you know got grandkids and the whole bit and even in their lives they were raised right we trained them we taught them we taught them about they saw me when I was messed up and there was a lot of stuff I had to explain and I didn't explain it away and I didn't make excuses and told them the truth even if it looked bad on me but at the same time even in their life you can ask them you can ask any one of my kids right now. I do not, I, I do everything I can to not impose in their lives. I'm here to help and support them. Uh, if they stumble and they need help, if I can help, I will. But at the same time, I'm not the one that's supposed to be going along with them and, and you know, coming up, sneaking up to their house and knocking on the door to catch them doing something. You understand? That's, and I don't do that with my own kids. I'm not going to do it with you. I'm here to preach the gospel. I'm here to hopefully live as an example. And, and really my goal is that I really fulfill Galatians 2.20. That it's no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me. And so I will tell you, God is my witness. People may not always see me do the things that they think I should do. But I can tell you this. I have done to others as I would want done to me. Now that doesn't always fit everybody. 
and it doesn't always make everybody feel good. But I will tell you this, and this is the part that is still, I'm still there. Listen, <clears throat> when you go to the hospital, if you go, okay, let's say first responders. <clears throat> you don't want a first responder that is a hospice worker. You understand what I mean? Yeah. You don't want, that's not the kind of first responder you want. When, you, when, you, when they walk in the room and you're bleeding to death, you don't want them to come over and take you by the hand and go, don't worry, it'll all be over soon. That's not what you want. You want the person, you want a patent. You, you want a general to come in there and slap on some Band-Aids, stop the bleeding, and even if they're rough with you, they save your life. Now, I will tell you, that is how I have been. Right? I'm not saying it's always been right. Um, but I will tell you, uh, for me to do what I have done, it has been necessary in my own life. Why? Because I have a tendency to get lazy. I have a tendency to get undisciplined. And so discipline helps push me that way. And so when I see responsibility, the responsibility is what has helped me be there for people when they call at 2 o'clock in the morning. Right? It's a sense of response. I've heard the phone ring, and I have to make that decision. Am I going to answer it? Or go back to sleep. It'd be easier to go back to sleep. Why? Because this could turn into an hour. Who knows what's going on? But you know what? That choice has never been that hard to make. When it rings, I'm up. You know? If there's been one thing, honestly, that my wife has complained about, it's the fact that I never turn my phone off. And, it has, and when I get awakened, she gets awakened. Right? And that's just the way it is. It's, you know, <laughs> she married into this. <laughs> okay? I warned her before. <laughs> but... There has to be that sense of responsibility. And so, now for me, everything I see in the Bible is gearing toward this. We've been talking about power and healing, and that's always fun, and it's always good, and people need it, right? But we have to realize that power without character is dangerous. Not only for the person, but for the people. Because the worst thing you can do is see somebody operating in power with no character and the people think, well, that must be okay with God. And then they go off and act the same way. And so <clears throat> things have changed drastically, even in my own heart, over the last months even. And so God has specifically pushed me in this direction in the sense of being able to recognize and say, you know what? <clears throat> we cannot be that generation that says, Lord, Lord. We cannot do that. That means we have to have the Spirit in our lives. Now, that having the Spirit in our lives literally means it's no longer we that live. What that means is this. We don't have the right to have or to take offenses or to get upset or to have emotions that run away with us. You have to have the fruit of the Spirit, which includes self-control, among many others, right? And honestly, if we emphasize some of the others, the self-control comes kind of natural. But we have to realize that everybody, every one of you probably came from different backgrounds. You have different world views. You have a different perspective on things. And honestly, if many times, I, I know I've heard it. You know, I've, I've, I've got the letters. I've got the emails from people. You know, I don't like this about you. I'm like, okay, you know. On the other hand, I've got a bigger stack of letters. People saying, thank God you were that militant. Why? Because it saved my baby's life. Because it saved my loved one's life. Why? Because I wasn't, because I, I didn't sugarcoat it. And because I don't take the luxury of dealing with my emotions in those situations. When I go into a bad situation, believe me, I, I'm right there. You, you go into a situation, especially with a baby or something like that, that's why a while ago when Thomas Love gave the testimony about the baby, that was, oh, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah. When you hear what, how God has healed or delivered a baby, but when you go into a, a situation where a baby, where there's something wrong, I, automatically, I have to do everything in my power not to start to cry, not to go into that, not to side with those parents to the point where I'm right there with them, suffering with them, because that's not why I'm sent there. I'm sent there to be a deliverer. And so I have to keep my emotions and those things in check. Now the bad part is, you can learn to do that so well that it becomes a normal part of your everyday process. And pretty soon, 
you really don't function well with emotions. And, I, and honestly, that's where God is making the corrections in me now. He's helping me learn how to truly function with emotions, but not to the point where it lessens the effectiveness of what I have to do. Amen? So I would appreciate... Uh, you know, grace, prayers, all that, all that, uh, definitely, because God has taken me somewhere. You know, I, for, for, I'll be honest with you, for 30 years, my spiritual growth was stunted on purpose because as I taught the DHT, I had to tell people, if I can do this, you can do this. And I knew I was talking at ground level Christians didn't pray much, didn't fast much, they didn't do the things, they didn't do the spiritual stuff that super spiritual Christians do. But my job was to train them and equip them and get them to be able to heal the sick so that they could save people's lives at their level. And because of that, I could not go deeper. Because the deeper I went, the bigger the gap got between me and them. And then whenever things started happening, people said, oh, we can do that. And it's like, yeah, but you probably won't. And so now, now, finally, this year, God has said, the message will carry on. The DHT is out there. People get it. People are teaching it. It's great. And people are passing it on. It will not die. If I quit focusing on it, it will not die. It, it will keep on going on. And now God is saying, now, I want you to go deeper. I want you to do that. And he's already showed me some things and told me some things and and some of these are fulfillments of prophecies that were given years ago. And he brought them back even on this last trip. Things come to mind. And, and honestly, all I have wanted, wanted to do is just spend time with God. That's all I want to do. And, and it's gotten where it's hard to even function sometimes, which is not the best way. You know, I mean, it's, but I know there's a time and it's come very quickly for me to be able to pull aside and be alone with God for an extended period of time. I don't know how long it's going to be. I don't know what. I know, I think we got things coming up. You know, I, but you can't put God in a box and say, okay, God, this is going to be great, but can you make it happen by 1230? You know, no, it doesn't work that way. You know, uh, God wants all of me. That, that's what it is. It's not me digging in and going to heaven, third heaven things and pulling. No, no, no. It's me dying. That's, that's what it is so that Christ can be seen because there's too, many, there's too much of me left. Yeah? And I hate that. And people say, well, we hate that too. Well, I hate it more than you do. I promise you. Right? But, you know, it's just that part. So I, that's where I'm going. And what's it going to look like? I don't know. I just know it's the path God has me on. 